you have a 44-year-old mechanic who presents with weakness in his dominant hand and complains of dro dropping wrenches and tools more often at work. He has tingling in the thumb and index fingers at the end of his day and says that sometimes he wakes at night feeling the need to shake his hand awake. The strength in his hand was 4 in the affected side and 5 in the unaffected side. What's the most likely diagnosis? In this particular case, we're looking at a carpal tunnel syndrome. So the motor innervation of the thumb muscles is oftentimes how it's reported, and some cutaneous innervation of the palm will be affected, as well as three and a half digits of the lateral fingers. There's a couple red flag signs that you'll see here. But let's go through some of the other options and how they don't make sense. The thoracic outlet syndrome, though it can compress brachial plexus, will oftentimes um, not have specific distributions, especially off of things that are going to the median nerve because it's getting contributions from further up. And there would be more than just hand effects. Carpal tunnel syndrome is a condition that can cause pain, numbness, and tingling in the hands. The carpals are the small bones in the wrist. They form a tunnel through which some of the flexor tendons pass. The median nerve also passes through the carpal tunnel. The median nerve branches throughout much of the hand and most of the fingers. It carries signals back from the hand and fingers to the brain to provide sensation. Stretching across the carpal tunnel is a band known as the flexor retinaculum, or the transverse carpal ligament. If the space within the carpal tunnel becomes too small, the median nerve may become compressed and irritated. The inflamed nerve does not function correctly, and the signals it sends to the brain are interpreted as pain, numbness, and tingling. Sometimes non-surgical treatment is effective. Carpal tunnel splints may help to relieve some of the pressure on the median nerve. Oral anti-inflammatory medications and steroid injections may help to reduce inflammation and relieve symptoms. Often these treatments are inadequate and surgery is necessary.